വെൽക്കം ടു എ ടി സി എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാൻ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് ഫോർട്ടി ത്രീ ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് ഫീമെയിൽ ഹു കെയിം ടു ഇയർ വിത്ത് കംപ്ലൈൻസ് ഓഫ് ട്വിച്ചിങ് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ബൈലാറ്ററൽ അപ്പർ ലിംസ് റൈറ്റ് മോർ ദാൻ ലെഫ്റ്റ് സിൻസ് ഹാഫ് ആൻ അവർ ഫോളോയിങ് ദ ഇൻജെക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ടു എം എൽ ലിഗ്നോക്കെയിൻ പ്ലസ് അഡ്രിനാലിൻ ഫോർ ടൂത്ത് എക്സ്ട്രാക്ഷൻ അറ്റ് ദ റീജൻ ഓഫ് ദ റൈറ്റ് അപ്പർ സെക്കൻഡ് മോളർ ആൻഡ് ഇനീഷ്യലി ഐ ഹാഡ് ടോൾ ദ സ്റ്റാഫ് ടു കീപ് ദ ക്രാഷ് കാർഡ് റെഡി നിയർ ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഐ ഹാഡ് ഓൾസോ ടോൾ ദ സ്റ്റാഫ് ടു കണക്ട് ദി ലീഡ്സ് ടു ദ ഡിഫിബുലേറ്റർ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ് ഐ വി ആക്സസ് ഓൺ ഇനീഷ്യൽ ടെൻ സെക്കൻഡ് അസസ്മെൻറ്റ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് വാസ് കോൺഷ്യസ് ഓറിയൻറ്റഡ് ഒബെയിങ് കമാൻസ് ആൻഡ് ടോക്കിംഗ് ഇൻ ഫുൾ സെൻറ്റൻസസ് ഇൻ പ്രൈമറി സർവേ ദ എയർവേ വാസ് പേറ്റൻ ദർ വാസ് നോ സ്വെല്ലിങ് ഓഫ് ലിപ്സ് ഓർ ടങ് ഓർ സ്ട്രൈഡർ ദർ വാസ് നോ കൂളിങ് ഓഫ് സെക്രീഷൻസ് ഗേഗ്ലിങ് ഓഫ് സൗണ്ട്സ് ഓർ ഹോസ്നെസ് ഓഫ് വോയ്സ് ദ ബ്രീത്തിങ് ദ റെസ്പിറേറ്റ് വാസ് എയ്റ്റീൻ പെർ മിനിറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദ സാച്ചുറേഷൻ വാസ് നയൻറ്റി നയൻ പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് ഇൻ റൂം എയർ ആൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഓസ്കോൾട്ടേഷൻ ദ എയർ എൻട്രി വാസ് ബയലാറ്ററലി ഈക്വൽ ആൻഡ് ദർ വാസ് നോ പ്രസൻസ് ഓഫ് എനി ആരഡ് സൗണ്ട്സ് ആൻഡ് സർക്കുലേഷൻ ദ ബി പി വാസ് വൺ തേർട്ടി ബാർ സെവൻറ്റി മില്ലിമീറ്റേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് മെർക്കറി ആൻഡ് ദ ഹാർട്ട് റേറ്റ് വാസ് വൺ ടെൻ പെർ മിനിറ്റ് ദ പെരിഫൽ പൾസസ് വെർ പാൽപ്പബിൾ ആൻഡ് വെർ ഈക്വൽ ഓൺ ഈക്വൽ ആൻഡ് ഡിസബിലിറ്റി ദ ജി സി എസ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഇ ഫോർ വി ഫൈവ് എം സിക്സ് ആൻഡ് എക്സ്പോഷർ ദ പേഷ്യ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് വാസ് എഫ് എ ബ്രൈൽ ആൻഡ് ജി ആർ ബി എസ് വാസ് വൺ ട്വൻറ്റി മില്ലിഗ്രാം പെർ ഡെസിലേറ്റർ സോ അഡ്ജൻസ് ടു പ്രൈവറ്റ് സെമേ വി ആർ ടേക്കൻ ഇ ഇ സി ജി ഇ സി ജി വാസ് ഷോയിങ് നോർമൽ സയൻസ് ഋതം ആൻഡ് എ ബി ജി വിച്ച് വി ആർ ടേക്കൻ ഇൻ എ ബി ജി ഓൾസോ എ ബി ജി വാസ് ഷോയിങ് നോ അസ്റ്റോസിസ് ഓർ ആൽക്കോളോസിസ് ദ പി ഒ ടു വാസ് എയ്റ്റി ആൻഡ് പി സി ഒ ടു വാസ് തേർട്ടി ടു ആൻഡ് Uh, the potassium was 3.5 mm-hmm. sodium was 143 and uh, bicarbonate was 26.5 okay glucose was 115 and mm-hmm. lactate was 2.0 okay and uh, the sample history mm-hmm. the 43 year old female uh, who is a known case of hypothyroidism mm-hmm. but not on any medication came to er with complaints of twitching movement of bilateral upper limbs uh, which was uh, right more than left and patient also had along with that uh, generalized tremor of bilateral upper lip and uh, it was since half an hour following injection of uh, 2 ml lignocaine plus adrenaline injection which was given locally uh, at the site of the right upper molar for uh, tooth extraction and there is uh, uh, we are asked uh, it was told that uh, during aspiration there was no presence of uh, any blood aspirated uh, before injection of uh, the you know, adrenaline plus lignocaine and the patient uh, d- did not have any uh, history of uh, overall perioral numbness and uh, the patient had uh, no history of any metallic taste uh, no history of any mental uh, changes or uh, the patient did not have any anxiety or uh, visual changes patient uh, did not have any episode of uh, seizure or uh, uh, decreased breathing or uh, and patient did not have any history of loss of loss of consciousness and patient uh, did not have any history of any uh, tinnitus or dysarthria a uh, patient has no history of any palpitation sweating chest pain or uh, dyspnea and there is no history of any rashes there is no history of any generalized uh, redness or flushing no history of headache uh, vomiting mm. loose stools and abdominal pra- pain and uh, allergic history the patient is allergic to uh, emesit <coughs> and uh, medication history she is currently not on any medication Uh, the past history she is a known case of uh, hypothyroidism and she uh, she had a history of anaphylaxis to uh, injection emesit uh, 2 years back uh, which was treated with uh, injection ad- adrenaline and the last meal was taken at 8 am in the morning what's your diagnosis uh, so uh, sir for uh, the tooth extraction procedure they had in- injected lignocaine plus adrenaline so we are suspecting a uh, lignocaine toxicity could be the possibility of mm. Yes. see the problem again here is the patient has gone to a clinic where yes. she has done a procedure yes from there she didn't develop anything yes. and after a long time she is complaining of this thing so yeah. after a long time in the sense it's after somewhere like 30 45 minutes yes yes so when you suspect a lignocaine toxicity as such it should happen immediately during that procedure itself mm-hmm. so it will not be Uh, something like mm. late presentation usually mm. not seen yes so uh, the most common thing you are doing the procedure simultaneously the patient is developing mm. these complications mm. that's a usual presentation yes, for sir. that purpose i am not saying delayed presentation to this extent is not very much classical of a lignocaine toxicity yes sir. okay so uh, local anesthetic toxicity uh, whenever you are thinking in terms you have to have a suspicion i am not uh, you have suspicion everything is good 
but what are the points that in favor you said that it can be a probable lignocaine toxicity or a local anesthetic toxicity uh, so in this patient uh, has history of uh, muscle twitching mm. so that uh, indicates an imbe- uh, there's a possibility of an impending seizure so okay. So in that possible muscle twitching impending seizure with normal sensorium yes. so can you let me know what are the symptoms of a local anesthetic toxicity how yeah. we can classify what will be the classical prodrome that you need to have yeah. in a patient with lignocaine toxicity or local yes. anesthetic what over yes sir uh, in usually local anesthetic toxicity uh, yeah. patient manifestations are mainly divided into uh, serious manifestations yes. and cns manifestations i am asking mm. prodrome 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 means uh. You are going to develop. You yes, are going yes. to develop. So yes. that will like you are an upper yes. respiratory yes. tract yes. infection. You are running nose. Yes. That will be the prodrome for a yes. viral illness. Similarly, yes. what will be the classical prodromes that you will get? Uh, patient has. You can said that in your okay. negative history. Yes, sir. So patient can have a history of uh, like peripheral numbness. Okay. So history then peripheral numbness and patient can have a feeling of a metallic taste. Metallic taste, taste. to the that these are all the classical uh, presentations yes. that and paresthesia numbness, yes. peripheral numbness, and uh, you yes. can have uh, metallic taste. Yes. So that will be the classical yes. thing that you need to consider. Yes. Then you can have the complication. Yes. You can divide them into CNS and CVS complications. Complication. CNS complication like seizures, yes. Yes. sudden unresponsiveness, collapse. All those skin can happen. Cardiovascular, you can have arrhythmia, yes, yes. bradycardia, yes. tachycardia, yes. and he can go into cardiac arrest. So this will be the worst yes. scenario that can happen. Yes, then, sir. yes, sir. So then, uh, we, we was, uh, if we are injecting a local anesthetic, we can suspect uh, about a case of anaphylaxis also. Okay. So we have ruled out uh, that feature. Also. Okay. So similarly, anaphylaxis also. it can come in and uh, the patient can respond it since he had a previous history yes. of anaphylaxis to yes. one of the drugs so yes. anyone can develop but uh, it i don't feel like the twitching and all those things can be related uh, to the local anesthetic toxicity it can be something else what else we need to evaluate her we i'm not sure this is the reason okay. but local anesthetic toxicity usually it will be adjacent to the mm-hmm. what are the procedure it has happened and mm-hmm. suddenly the patient will come in and another thing what you need to keep that in your mind is uh, what will be the other cause of twitching and all that can be a simple hypocalcemia yes sir. can be simple hypocalcemia maybe during that uh, p- time she would have some pain and maybe she would have hyperventilated for some time and she would have developed this uh, twitching mm-hmm. movements and all those things we don't know yes uh, because we have to we haven't seen that episode mm-hmm. and somebody is coming after that don't you can keep it one of your differential diagnosis mm-hmm. yes, but the presentation is not very classical so that's yes, what i will say yes sir now suppose imagine that you having you have confirmed a local anesthesia toxicity mm. how will you go about this managing this case uh. so it's a totally a, uh, one of the worst thing that an ed physician wanted to have it in his emergency room mm. uh, because the most wor- when you give the regional anesthesia that is the uh, worst thing that it can happen when you are giving especially when you are planning to give higher dose of local anesthetic where you will use higher amount of local anesthetic uh, mainly in uh, nerve block which nerve block Actually, in uh, which nerve block we will use higher amount? Uh, facial, facial, iliac, facial, facial, femoral, all those femoral. things. You will use a higher amount of uh, uh, local anesthetic because you wanted to have a better adductor block. All those things you might use a higher amount of local anesthetic. Where for a ring block, it's also a mm-hmm. regional anesthesia. Necessary. We don't hardly use one one point five ml, two mm-hmm. ml. Maybe a alna nerve block, radial nerve block. We use a very smaller amount of and smaller ml of uh, this thing only. So before that, what as an ED physician we should be knowing is that what are the risk factors for a local anesthetic toxicity? Okay. What are the risk factors? You have to name one, two, three, four, five. What are the common risk factors? Okay, okay. this patient there is a high chance of developing a local anesthetic toxicity, so that you can be more vigilant. Yes, so what are the risk factors uh, so mainly depends on the age, age okay. of the patient extremes of age extremes of age mm. sir then patient if a patient has a cardiac conduction abnormality okay previous yes. coronary artery disease, disease previous bundle branch right. blocks previous history of arrhythmias yes. then so then patient if has a renal dysfunction acidosis, acidosis. because acidosis again it can worsen the arrhythmia so acidosis then uh, hypoxia most common is hypoxia that's what we commonly see hmm. hypoxia acidosis then you will have cardiac abnormalities these are all group and extremes of age hmm. and there are mitochondrial dysfunction hmm. suppose you have got a special kid that has come to you your mitochondrial dysfunction already is there they are got a high uh, risk factor and there is one more risk factor that normally we don't see uh 
ഓക്സിജൻ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പെർസെൻറ്റ് ഓക്സിജൻ സോ ദാറ്റ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഡസ് നോട്ട് ഹാവ് ഹൈപ്പോക്സിയ ഓക്കെ ഹൈപ്പോക്സിമിയ ദൻ സെക്കൻഡ് തിങ് ഇസ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് മസ്റ്റ് നോട്ട് ബി ഇൻ അസഡോസിസ് സോ വി മസ്റ്റ് കറക്റ്റ് ഇഫ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഹാസ് അസഡോസിസ് വി മസ്റ്റ് കറക്റ്റ് ദ അസഡോസിസ് and you don't uh, rather than correcting the acidosis don't give for an acidotic patient right. that will be more easier yes, we have other method of uh, administering uh, regional yes, anesthetic yes, or we have another methodology to achieve anesthesia yes, sir. Uh, so while administration of the uh, local anesthetic mm. uh, we must always make sure that if we have an ultrasound we have to have an, you have to use ultrasound, ultrasound. that's it yes. there is no nothing escaping on that you have to use an ultrasound, ultrasound. guided only yes. then so then uh, always uh, uh, we should aspirate before uh, injection but that can have force. only the problem is that we all been taught that single time aspiration mm. it is not single time aspiration it is multiple time aspiration so that is another thing that you have to keep in your mind mm. initially what we thought just once you aspirate then you see no blood you give the full dose but don't do that you do multiple aspiration mm. so that is the another thing that you can help mm. to prevent having mm. a local anesthetic toxicity and use uh, next thing uh, sir uh, this uh, combination with adrenal like epinephrine <laughs> can prevent toxicity like it's uh, worse effects rather why adrenaline we are giving we so can use a lower yeah, amount of local anesthetic, anesthetic so yes, that sir. the effect will be yeah, more. more yes sir so that is the reason why we are using yeah. adrenaline yeah. so to decrease the toxicity yeah. of lignocaine yeah. we can yeah. use that yeah. then use the preferable agent yeah. with the right dose yeah. calculate the right dose no it is not one size fits for all you yeah. have to calculate the patient's weight and then you have to use it though okay. like give him, i will give him 10 ml i will give him her also 10 ml that should not be the yeah. thing you should be using the correct dose then yes, yes, then uh, we must give we giving a small in, small dose in small incremental, the, incremental dose incremental that's what aspirate you give aspirate you give intermittent aspirate mm-hmm. rather than you just aspirate and give the full dose it should not be practice yes. that then if patient is uh, under ge like patient is already under uh, general anesthesia we can like avoid using uh, like you can anesthesia. alternative method of uh, anesthesia is already mm-hmm. available you can so these are the things that will help to prevent the local mm-hmm. anesthesia toxicity so we have said what are the risk factors we have discussed what are the things that you can help to prevent mm-hmm. the local anesthesia toxicity mm-hmm. and third thing how will you manage the local anesthesia toxicity mm-hmm. and three way we will discuss one is the patient is having local anesthesia toxicity he is having mild symptoms major symptoms and in cardiac arrest so this will be the presentation okay. like you imagine this patient had a mild symptoms mm. the next thing a patient had a major symptoms like she developed in an arrhythmia or a cns dysfunction mm. and finally you had a cardiac oh, arrest with local anesthesia toxicity so these three how will you manage yeah, okay. so in the case of mild toxic- yeah. um, toxicity uh, patient may have a, a possibility of an impetic seizure or uh, what is the first thing that you want to do uh, first thing Uh, first okay. thing what you wanted to do stop, stop the drug stop the drug that is the first that's yeah. the most common thing stop the, the local lens yes. you remove it then so uh, after that uh, we can uh, <coughs> check for signs of uh, impending seizure then we can give uh, intralipid intralipid is on uh, mild symptoms you don't like for this li- patient you need not give intralipid yeah, emulsion yes, it is not required yes, then the second category you just stop the infusion yes. if the patient symptoms settle that's fine. fine the patient symptom is not improving then you have to think in terms of huh? seizure or a cns yeah, com- seizure or a cvs complication imagine that this patient has developed an uh, ventricular tachycardia yes sir uh, so in this case we can uh, give um, amiodor amiodor yeah, ventricular arrhythmia yeah. that's what specifically i wanted that could come out of it you give intralipid emulsion mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. treatment is intralipid emulsion mm-hmm. see what is lignocaine and amiodor difference no yes it's yeah it's excellent what you are creating more problem to the patient mm-hmm. by giving another anti arrhythmic mm-hmm. agent mm-hmm. here the treatment should be giving mm-hmm. lipid emulsion mm-hmm. how does lipid emulsion prevents this uh, lignocaine toxicity 
said mainly uh, like like fund of ml it forms an mlc mlc fine agent because mm. already local anesthesia agents are like philic mm. agents mm. so we give uh, intralipid so that they form an emulsion so that the drug is not absorbed absorbed, absorbed. so what is the dose that you wanted to start off with uh, so we can give the dose of hum you read it properly yes, and tell no but you so it first uh, because we are not routinely using it it is mm. difficult to remember sir so for adults if uh, the weight is more than 70 kg uh, we give it at a bolus dose of 100 ml iv uh, it is over given over 2 to 3 minutes uh, which is followed ml by per kg you can just tell me what is yes, ml sir, per kg uh, it's 1.5 ml mm. per kg and uh, it is in ideal body weight iv over 2 to 3 minutes uh, following which we can give it an, as an infusion uh, at a rate of 0.25 ml per kg per uh, minute in case of uh, infants in adults we usually give it as an infusion of 250 about 250 ml maximum uh, dose how much maximum you can maximum dose give? 12 ml per kg we give 12 till 12 mg per kg you can give yes. so that's a you can repeat the doses 1.5 yeah. 1.5 you can yes. repeat depending on see giving antiarrhythmic is not the treatment you have to avoid antiarrhythmic especially yes. ccbs beta blockers they all create yes. more trouble to the patient yes, and uh, so that is very very crucial you have to give lipid emulsion yes. that is the treatment yes sir. then you see arrhythmia is over and then you come to the side seizures seizures mm. so we can give a benzodiazepine benzodiazepine is the choice yes, yes. and if at all you want if at all you want you can give what will be the next best agent of choice it will be propofol propofol, propofol not the full dose mm-hmm. maybe half or quarter dose of propofol mm-hmm. so that is the next ideal agent for this because again if you are getting phenytoin chance of arrhythmia is again increasing so ideal will be to use propofol half or one third the dose of propofol will be an ideal agent benzodiazepine usually will be more than enough again with lipid emulsion so lipid emulsion is the primary treatment along with depending upon the scenario you can treat and finally the patient has gone into cardiac arrest how will you manage So we, we can uh, do the ACL pro- ACLS protocol, and uh, we can give a injection adre- adrenal. Mm. Adrenal uh, must be given uh, less than one mi- micro. See the routine dosing of adrenal is not necessary. Yes. So that is the most important thing. Yes. So routine dose of adrenal is not required. What you need to give here it is most importantly you have to give lipid emulsion. You continue the lipid emulsion and decrease the dose of adrenal as the dose that you set less than. One micro, one microgram per kilogram. Per As an infusion, you can start. Yeah. So that will be the dose of adrenaline. Vasopressin should be avoided, avoided. again. Yes, sir. So that is one very important thing that you need to keep, and very crucial. You have to correct the hypoxia and acidosis. Once you are not correcting your acidosis and hypoxia, that will further worsen mm-hmm. your toxicity. So. Yes, in your resuscitation you have to be very clear adrenaline high doses of adrenaline is not required it can create more problem to the patient yes, because already there is an arrhythmia chance is high you are giving more and more adrenaline that can worsen the arrhythmia so these are the three important things that you need to remember yes, mild symptoms cvs cns complication and finally into cardiac arrest yes. this can happen very rarely maybe once in a lifetime we'll be seeing these things but still being use of lot of regional anesthesia these days yes. but the most important thing you have to use with an ultrasound guidance mm, yes. ultrasound guidance a right dose is the most crucial one and small small incremental doses whichever dose when you are getting the maximum desired effect you stop maybe the body per body kg is very high mm. but when you are getting the desired effect you stop so uh, that is again very important so patient to patient it may vary one size doesn't fit all so you have to calculate for each patient and you have to use it judiciously okay yes. can anything else that you want to add on Okay, so local anesthesia toxicity (LAST) that is the mnemonic, mm-hmm. not the mnemonic. That's the short form that we can use. Last means local anesthetic toxicity. Yes. So short local anesthetic mm-hmm. systemic, systemic toxicity. toxicity. Okay. Yes. Fine. Thank you.